pass anyway, even though I didn't put things up last time, but I, I eventually I will. Uh, so let, let me let me just get started and um, let us uh, kind of review what we were doing last time. Basically, we are saying that like uh, we talk about this uh, crafts inequality. There's some kind of conditions. So, oh, why I cannot uh, see? Yeah, okay, I cannot. It's some some kind of uh, condition that like um, as long as I like, if we have a length profile, we don't know whether this length profile is going to be like uh, uh, can be losslessly recovered. Uh, that that how do we call the losses we cover? Let's see. It's uniquely decodable, right? So we want to see like if this the lane profile is uniquely decodable, and we show that like a graph inequality basically saying that if we have a lane profile, let's say like with length l one up to l k. Then, as long as like, this L satisfy this condition, like the sum over this um, uh, two to L i k, oh sorry, L k, two to L k, is less than equal to one, then we will be able to find some um, some uh, code word such that like uh, for the first code word we have length L one and second code word with length L two and so on. So that this co code is uniquely decodable, and uh, we show that this is like, uh, it's like, uh, it is true for both forward and converse, in the sense, saying that like if this is not satisfied, if this link uh, this uh, class inequality is not satisfied, then it's not able to find such code, and if it's able to satisfy this one, we can always find uh, such a code. And now like. Um, Next, what, why we want to introduce this class inequality uh, is that we want to just show the entropy. Basically, the first definition for our entropy will be like we have some source here. Uh, it will be like some discrete memoryless source as we, we described earlier that will have some this discrete memoryless source. So discrete, so f, the the output will be discrete, and memoryless will be like uh, every time we are drawing from this source, um, the the consecutive variables, random variables will be independent to each other. So if we have such discrete memoryless source, we want to see like how far we can compress this source. So let's say if I have like continues to pull out this source like, with length n, and then I'm trying to compress it. So I have this encoder, whatever is trying to code this thing using a uniquely decodable code. And we know that like uh, s since the code is uniquely decodable, we want to make sure that like this class inequality is satisfied. Therefore, like for each of these co uh, each of this um sample drawing from this source uh, if i map into some code word with some length profile like this l here um then okay by the way then the expected length what is the expected length the expected length will be simply like this way so this is the random variable drawing from this source here and when it map to a code word, this LX just represents like, the length of that code word. So do I make myself clear? Yeah. Okay, okay. So um so this is the length. So that's supposing I want to mis minimize this as much as possible, right? So and uh, but again I to ensure this is uniquely decodable, I need to make sure this constraint is satisfied. Basically, the class inequality constraint, 
this uh, let's say call it i to this minus l i uh, is less than equal to one, right? Um, and um, now, so uh, then we'll basically just have a optimization problem, right? So and what was this thing here? So let let's say um, uh, uh, let's say uh, that's how to yeah. Let me simplify the rotation a little bit. So I will call P K is the probability that like uh, X is equal taking so this X here, let's say. It's a discrete way. You can take say some um, a number of like different possible outcome. Let's say the outcome will be like small x one, x two up to like small x k here. So um, let's say x back k here, back k here, and then a p k here is the probability x will take the value x small x k. Okay, so then uh when it takes the value small x k then um l x k will call like say l k is just equal to l small x k something like that huh is that okay that's length yeah that's length this is length yes this is length this length for the k uh cohort so then uh this <coughs> Expectation now I can rewrite as like E L X is equal to sum over K yes L K times P K right yeah. yes L K times P K yes now then then okay therefore like the optimization problem become like some minimize sum over K L K P K and the objective function I'm subjected to uh, this let's use k again 2 to the minus lk this is sum over to big k let's say k equal to 1 and less than equal to 1 and uh, remember last time we also spent time to talk about some optimization very uh, constraint optimization method basically uh, we, we talk about the KKT conditions we know that uh, we with some constraint we can absor absorb the constraint into as a Lagrange multiplier uh, basically this one I can solve instead this k equal to 1 to big k lk pk let's see um, yeah, whether I use minus or let's let, let's use minus. Um, let's use mu log. And um, uh, uh, let let's not put the gradient first, uh -huh. because I don't. I, it's basically I'm going to minimize that way. So minimize this. Minimize k equal to one. K to the minus l k minus one. Something like that. And uh, actually, I, I have more constraint. I didn't write it down. I have more constraint. Basically, um, L K for all K is has to be bigger than equal to zero. Right? For all K, right. the length has to be bigger. So therefore, like I, I actually have one some more term. I I will have something like plus um, mu K. LK K equal to 1 to back K here. So this is basically, I just want to make sure this is bigger than 0. So the sign here, just uh, okay, uh, uh, I, 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 I want to make the signs. Uh, you see, I, I have the sign here is minus, but this sign is positive because I, for this one, this is like LK bigger than equal to 0. But for this constraint here, it's like this value is less than equal to one. So, and uh, I I put in this sign because I afterwards uh, I can just uh, 
Also, if you remember like what we derived last time, when this is on inequality constraint, then like this Lagrange multiplier ha ha cannot take any value. I mean, cannot take all possible possible values, but instead like it can only take like half of the real plane. And basically, uh, if I put this sign like this, it's it's more convenient because afterward I I will have like basically mu naught. Uh, mu one and so on up to mu k all has to be bigger than equal to zero. Mm -hmm. This is one of the constraints there. Uh, if you remember, like the west of this uh, Lagrange multiplier, sorry, sorry, west of this KKT conditions. Um, okay, of course, I uh, one condition is that uh, then we should take this gradient and set it to zero, and gradient with respect to we need to be very careful. Which which one is the variable here? Uh, we are minimizing over. One. Yes, but we are mi minimizing over what? Like there are so many stuff is getting confusing. Um. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. We are mi minimizing over the uh, for for L. So therefore, like okay. Let, let's uh, skip this part now. Let's just remove that. Um, I suppose to take gradient, the whole thing, and be careful the gradient is, is taking with respect to L here. That the gradient of that is set to zero. Um, I have these constraints I just mentioned. Um, I also have, if you remember the KKT condition, of course I, I have the always original constraint. Um, I should put it back as a KKT condition. That's basically. Um, this constraint and also LK has to be bigger than equal to zero. And also like there, there, there's a complementary slack -like, slackless condition is saying that like I should have like this thing is equal to zero for the optimum mu ML and also like this each of this is equal to zero. That means that like I also have this k two to the minus l k minus one is equal to zero, and um, also like mu k l k is equal to zero. So that that's basically all the KKT conditions. Now we can solve it, right? First, first we want to take the gradient for this guy. Yes. Why should be equal to zero? That yes, that that's the uh, a curve long as the com uh, this KKT conditions here. Yeah? So this is um, one of the KKD conditions. Is like you when you have the constraint, you have the uh, constraint multiplied by the Lagrange multiplier. Mm -hmm. This part, when you get to the optimum, mm -hmm. will be equal to zero because you think of that like uh, if I have a constraint, let's say I have some other optimization problem. I have minimized this f x, mm -hmm. and then I have a constraint like g x is uh, is equal to g or something. Then if I put this as a kind of like a Lagrange multiplier thing, say so I have f x plus this, trying to solve instead this thing here, minimum number g x minus g, mm -hmm. and these two should be the same, right? This this the result should be exactly identical. Mm -hmm. Now if this is really identical, when when I have the optimum value, let's say I have the optimum x star and lambda star. Right. Then on the right hand side, this one is just equal to f x star, right? And the left hand side, I have f x star plus this value here. So th this means that for the optimum lambda star, uh, lambda star x star, this part should always equal to zero as well. For the optimum, when, when you reach the optimum. When we are we reaching the optimum, it should be on the gradient uh, f x uh, equal to zero, something like that. Uh, because okay, okay. Th this will be taking care of the gradient is here. But uh, forget about the gradient first. Just think of like, these two optimization problems are actually the same. Yes. Th this is the same because um, you look at this one here. Uh, we absorb this constraint here. It's really, really interesting way to do this because when we also absorb this constraint, what it's saying is that we have two possibility here. If gx not equal to g. And then um, what what what's this value? This value will be f x 
plus uh, something plus lambda. Oh, okay. I, I should have like uh, sorry about that. Actually, when when I write that, a little bit careful. Uh, I should say this is equal to. Uh, this is equal to mean. Oops. 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 Mean over x, but mass over lambda. Okay, so now now yes, a and this two is actually equivalent. When you write it this way, this is equivalent because when when this is not satisfied, when this constraint is not satisfied, then I maximize over lambda. This is long zero, right? Yeah. I I can make this thing become infinity, right? Yeah. So this thing is a so therefore it will never pick up any values that when the constraint is not satisfied basically this is not equal to mm -hmm. so uh so therefore these two should be should be the same so now if i i have actually have the optimum like x star and a lambda star so if that's the optimum then i don't have this value here i don't have this uh optimization anymore eh? i can just pack into this here and i have this optimum x star and also have the optimum x star lambda star on both sides, let, let me do it again. So if now this two optimization problem is the same, now let's say this is the solution, x yeah. star lambda star. Okay. Then I put it on the right hand side is simply the uh, left hand side is simply f x star, right? Okay. And then the right hand side is what? It's just f x star plus lambda star times g x star minus g, right? But of course, I f x star is equal to f x star plus this thing here. Okay. Then this thing has to be equal to zero okay. for the optimum. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, yes. So therefore, like for the optimum, this mu not star or whatever. Like, uh, let me just omit the star. We, we know that we are talking about the optimum. When when at the optimum, like we have this uh complementary slack list, just making all this. Uh, Lagrange multiplied multiplied by the constraint will be equal to zero. So this one is zero. This one is also equal to zero. So then we we have all the conditions here. Then we can actually solve that. So let's see how to solve this. So first, uh, let's see. Okay, first let's assume. Oh, okay, your length if it's equal to zero, then doesn't doesn't do anything, right? It should be bigger than zero to start with. Your length should be bigger than zero. So because length is bigger than zero, mu should be equal to zero, eh? So mu k should all equal to zero, except mu zero, or mu k should be equal to zero. So if mu k equal to zero, then thi this is gone, and this is actually this better, this is gone now. Then uh, taking the gradient with respect to L, then this one I actually get um, p k here, something like, or, or like if you think of take gradient, it's just taking partial derivative with something, right? The 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 jth element of that factor is a like partial derivative with respect to L J, let's say. So take partial derivative uh with respect to L J of this thing here, then I will have P J right? P J for the first term. And then the second term I will have like minus mu naught. Uh this is uh this is uh, 2 to the minus lj not uh, 2 okay Let, let's stop that this way so why we have that because I uh, 2 is equal to e to the log 2 right uh, or like um, e to the two ln two. 2 yeah not e. oh yeah ln yeah that's that's yeah okay. so this is 2 so m to the mi power minus okay. okay and then this to the power will be just getting inside right so therefore that is minus not two times l k yeah. so uh, i take derivative with respect to l l yeah l j so l j there's a sum here with respect to l j that will be just equal to e to the minus not two something right uh, L J mu not P J minus, and of course this is just two to the 
uh, minus L. I mean, this whole thing is. Let's see. Is that oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, okay, that's I, 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 I'm missing. Like, if I take the derivative, that's also log two coming down, right? Because this is like e to the a x, right? So I take the derivative over x uh, with respect to x. Then I have e to the a x times a. So this is like the a here. This is the a here, coming down. Huh? From where? Long, uh, long two. Oh, this log two. Yes, this one. Yes. Yeah, this one. This log yeah. two. This one, yeah. Yes, this log two because I, I'm taking derivative of this with respect to L J. Yes. So, e to the if you remember e to the a x if I take derivative with respect to x, then will be like e to the a x times a right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this 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 log two is basically a. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I understand. Yeah. So. Okay, so yes, then therefore we have this, and of course this part, we can get this back to to the minus L J. So it's like to the minus L J log two mu naught P J, and this thing is equal to zero. So I I just have this basically, right? So therefore, like. 2 to the minus lj is equal to pj over mu oh. log, yeah? Not 2. And, uh, and also, we need to have what? We need to have this original the graphs inequality saying that 2 to minus lj, lk, maybe use lk, is less than equal to 1. So therefore, this I can substitute into that. I have. Uh, I need to have a new. So I let just copy part of this here. Okay, so uh, I, I need to get back the pen. Oh, how can I <laughs> get this disappear? Okay, I cannot for the moment. Oh, it's okay. Uh, can I? Can I? Okay, there's more, what's that more? Oh, this is a little bit annoying. Uh, so anyway, I just used the space here, I guess. Uh, so maybe I... I yes. Yeah, I, I, I want to, but I cannot. It's stuck. This thing is stuck. I, I Maybe just go down. Yes. Let's see if, like... Oh. Oh, okay. It's set pause. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, I probably paused like a moment ago. So anyway, so I'm back. So I, I probably... Okay, so... Uh, let's see. And we said that uh, we, we have that, then we substitute into this one. Then we have like some over... Why my pen is... Okay. We have some over... Ah, uh, okay. Sum over this pj over mu lot lot 2 is less than equal to 1, right? 
m of course sum over pjp is probability where sum over pj is just is equal to one so mu log log q is less than equal to one so we get like mu log is uh, bigger than equal to one over log two and um, so and, and know that like what, what's going on is like mu log is here right so if mu log is getting smaller mu log decrease then this term decrease increase right pj mu log log 2 will increase and then actually length of lj will decrease right so therefore like we want to have like mu log as small as possible right so and of course mu log is this it cannot be smaller than one over log two we will just should take like mu log as equal to one over log two so then if mu log is equal to one over log two then we immediately already have like minus two till lj is equal to pj right and uh or in other words like uh our p of lj the length is simply equal to minus log p right and i see uh, log yeah minus log 2 p j yeah something like that right yeah so it means that like okay this this is something i should emphasize here so it means that okay after the entire optimization it gives the suggestion that if your the probability of the symbol taking the outcome i mean the probability of the outcome of the symbol is like pj then the best uh, lane for that symbol should be just like minus of pj so uh and then like now what's the expected length the expected length now remember that it's just equal to pj lj way right? sum over all the j whatever then therefore this is just equal to uh, P J log P J minus. Yes, minus yes, and this is exactly the equation for entropy for a discrete manual and, and this this give a uh, reason why why we have um, uh, entropy is defined that way. So uh, and uh, um, okay, in the, in my slides actually I have a short hand notation for that, that as a P1, PK. Uh, this is just a shorthand notation for uh, this thing here. Uh, and um, so, so... So the minimum of length is the same to the entities, its entropy. Um, average, yes, the average length. Yeah. Then, then, when you have you try you have the source, you want to compress it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Then the the average size you can compress is the same as the entropy basically. So we cannot less than. Yeah, you you cannot less than that because I if you less than that you will violate basically the Crafts inequality, mm -hmm. and then it will give you not uh uh what is that called again like. You you have a loss less recovery. It's not um, you cannot recover the source anymore. So it means that we can uh, less than uh, entropy, but uh, there is will be lossy. Yes, it will be lossy. Yes, it's possible, but then it, what what you recover will be lossy. It, it won't be uh, the same as the original. You will subject to some distortion. Um, I'm I'm okay. This is a. Uh, kind of nice I guess as uh, engineering kind of proof like it's very intuitive but of course I like, there's a slight issue here that like, you may question like uh, how, how do we uh, implement a kind of how do we design this code like we have this uh, picture at the beginning now we have the source we know that we can compress it somehow design some source this is some mapping some some encoder then give you something. This will be the bit stream. You can compress. Let's say this is n. If you have 
and input here. So the we can compress uh, at the entropy, right? Will be like something like let's say the entropy denoted by h x here, and and then like so if you have n symbols here, it means that like you can like at most you can compress into n h x bits, right? And, and then like but but how do you do it? Like in the sense that like how do you account? Um, after you compress it, how do you decode it back or stuff like that? Okay. So we, we didn't answer this question. We just say like theoretically you can compress up to that. And um, we know that like you cannot compress more than that. And also like from the craft inequality, remember that the craft inequality is like uh, it's both sufficient and necessary condition. So uh, if if you satisfy the craft inequality, then you are able to find such a code. So therefore we, we know that that will be code allow us to compress up to like energy speed but uh, here like this proof here didn't specify how we are going to do it so I, I'll just give one um, possible way to do that um, and uh, uh, it's long at the maybe I again I open a new new page so I don't need to cut in the middle So um, huh. I, I don't know whether I can I can move a uh, thing around. No, actually. Oh, did I? So anyway, so um, I I'm going to talk about this call like Shannon Fano. ADS code. Uh, this is one of these very early attempt to get to compress uh, close to the entropy. So the key idea is that we we're going to do some mapping uh, of um, any interval between zero to one as some code word. So. For example, like if we have a um, a code word like something like one one zero, so what it will represent as an interval between like zero to one will be something like uh, it will first like transform into like the interval like zero point one one zero and to zero point one one zero. One 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 something like that, infinite number of one. Or like maybe I can just put a dot here, to to uh, the dot should be, be maybe put it below uh, to indicate that like it's basically zero point one zero one 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 one. Yes. So uh, as you can see, like okay, any number then it will be mapped into an interval between. Of course, this is binary, right? This is a, I I'm representing this is a binary. Uh, um, uh, um, binary representation, and um, um, it, it's binary representation. Therefore, like one should be just equal to zero point one 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 one, or like zero point one dot will be just equal to one. It's on this other end here, um, and uh, I I I want to make a self observation here. Uh, first, I the longer the length of this code word, the shorter the interval. Eh? Actually, the uh, interval will be exactly half each time you add one more uh, binary digit here. Eh? Each time I add one more binary digit here, then uh, the, the, the length of this interval will be constrained by half. And uh, more precisely, if I have just like one bit or one binary digit here, for example, if I have a code word 1, this corresponds to a region like 0 0.1 to 0 0.1111111 and so on, right? And um, this in binary, then what was this actually, by the way? Can you, can you convert that? Do you know what it is? Yeah. Um, sorry. Yes? Um, what's what's this? this? This is the. Uh, what, of, what of this is uh, this one? one? Uh, maybe I should, I should write this as a. Cover mapping. So what I mean is, I 
this this side is a code word. Uh, this side is some code word. And this side is mapping into some intervals between uh, between zero and one. So any code word, when when I code word, so for example one one zero, it will just correspond to an interval like zero point one one zero to zero point one one zero one 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 one. Yes. Okay. So therefore, like this one here will correspond to interval zero point one uh, to zero point one 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 one. Of course, this zero point one 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 is just equal to one. Right? That's one. Yes. How how about this one? Do you know what is this one? It's zero. Zero point one. Yeah. No, no, no. Zero point one is not zero. So zero point zero is zero, right? But uh, zero point one is uh. So th this is in binary. So uh, you, you know, in binary, uh, in binary, if I before, like, so if I have uh, I have a digit here, binary digit here. So if, for example, if I have one zero one zero one, what does this represent? Is basically saying like uh, one times two to the zero two to the zero order yes. plus zero times two to one order. Plus one times two to two order, right? Yes. And before the decimal will be like zero times uh, two to the minus one order, yes. and this is a like two to the minus two minus order. Two. Yes. So, yes. So that is so. It will be two. This is will be two minus two. This uh. And this one is will be two times uh, two two power zero. And plus this one because this is zero, so only this one and this one and this one. Wait, that that would be like four plus. Yeah, plus uh, one, one plus. Yeah, plus. This uh, zero, right? Zero. But this this is a. This uh, is. One plus four. Yes, one two four, one two five, wait, one over four. Yeah, that's right. Yes, so this is a five point two five, something like that. So this is equal to five. So for this one, this one is equal to two point two five, right? So this is equal to five point two five. So for this one, therefore, like this is actually just. One to the power uh, times two to the minus one, right? So therefore, this is actually just zero point five. Zero point five. Yes, because I zero point one using the same thing here. So this is actually is equal to like one times a like two to the minus one, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so 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 it's like zero. So therefore, like one is actually correspond to this interval here, from zero point five to one. This interval here. Okay. Yeah. And as I said earlier, like if I have the length of this code word, uh, it's just increased by one more binary digit. Then the um the corresponding inter corresponding interval which just shrink by halfway. For example, instead of one one one, if I have one one here, then this correspond to the interval like zero point one one and zero point one 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 and so on. On the other end here is still one, but on this end here will be like uh zero point five plus zero point two five, right? Yes. So this is zero point seven five. So this this one is actually correspond to this interval here, like right? Something like that. So the the idea here is like Okay, I have this one to one corresponding mapping. So uh wherever they have this code word, this correspond to some interval. Now there's a kind of a simple lemma that um you you one can observe basically if I have uh, a kind of um a mapping like this, like a cohort to interval mapping like this one, then the, uh, let's say I have uh, uh, I call like u x one is the interval for the first cohort, and u x two is the interval for the second cohort, and let's say c x one is the actual cohort for the first. Uh, First symbol and the CX two is the code for the second symbol. So what I mean is like th this is a CX one 
and ux1 have the condition is like here have the mapping like 6 one will map to the interval like this says to map to the interval like uh, ux2 and uh, what's interesting is that like if um, if ux1 and ux2 does not overlap so it means that the intersection is an empty set if it does not overlap then um, cx1 and cx2 cannot be prefix of one another So what I mean is that like um I I cannot have six one is a prefix of six two or six two is a prefix of six one or or something like if I if you remember last time we say like something is prefix would be something like for example if six one is one one, six two is like one one zero one, then in this case six one is a prefix of six two. Yes, right. But here what we're saying that like as long as they do not overlap then uh, I cannot have either of them like be a prefix of one another, and uh, this is uh, actually a very uh, easy thing to show. Uh, let's just show. Let's I have a statement like this. Uh, uh, okay, actually, this may not be. I'm not sure. This is a a uh, two way argument. I I just I don't need two way. I actually just need one way. So let's say if like when they when they don't intersect, then I. I, I just want to make sure that one of them is not prefix of each other. Mm -hmm. This is the only the condition I need. Mm -hmm. So I can call this statement is A and this statement is B, let's say. And then it's basically just saying that A will will imply B. And of course I this is equivalent logically not B is equal will imply log eight. Yes. There's there's some logic stuff. So we will just show this instead. Like if 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 not B, that means that like if one of them is prefix of another, mm -hmm. right? So if like this guy is a prefix of another, uh, let's say without loss of uh, uh, general generality, let's assume that like uh, CX one is a prefix of CX two. So for example, this is CX one. This is CX2. So, okay, we, we can actually very easy to see that, like, these two must overlap with each other. Uh, because, like, if this is the case, then um, the lower bound of CX1, or for UX1, the lower bound is, like, 0 0.11 here, right? And, uh, the lower bound for UX2 is 0 0.1101 and of course like this one UX2 is bigger than this UX1 here I mean also, also I mean the lower bound I should say the lower bound of uh, of UX2 will be bigger than the lower bound of UX1 here and on the other hand I What's the upper bound of UX1? Upper bound of UX1 is 0 0.1111111, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? And the upper bound of UX2 is 0 0.1101111. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So on on the other hand, this upper bound of like UX1 is bigger than UX2, right? So actually, <coughs> you can see like if I draw it graphically, it'd be like this, right? U, UX1, the lower bound of UX1 is smaller uh wait 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 ux1 it's smaller so this is ux1 right ux1 lower bound yeah. and then i i have an upper bound it's like let's say ux1 is here up to here so this is ux1 this is ux1 now the the upper bound or lower bound of ux2 is above like ux1 right but the upper bound of ux2 is like less than ux1 right so it's not just um, they uh, they intersect. Actually, I have uh, something like more strong stronger. It's basically like 
UX2 is actually a subset of UX1. So then of course I this um, yeah I have this not B is not A is so therefore A is B. A and it should yeah. be uh, yeah. outside of UX2 should be outside of UX1 so we need to be here. That's not prefix free, prefix free. Therefore. Oh wait, you this is UX2. Yeah, I mean that uh, to, to to make it a prefix free prefix free, UX2 should oh, be yes, 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 outside. Uh, yes, so so therefore like Actually, what's going on is like if you want to prefix free, mm -hmm. you you don't want to have any overlap. Yeah. I'm actually if you if you don't have any overlap, then you can make sure it's prefix free. Yeah. So, so therefore, like what what we're going to do is like we want to make sure that like each of the intervals corresponding to, uh, I mean each interval correspond to each, um, code word should have no intersection mm -hmm. to one another. So that that's the goal. So how can we do that? Like so, th that's exactly um, what uh, SFA SFE code now trying to do. So now, what they did is simply the following. So think of I have like some source here x, and we can take uh, different outcomes. I say I have like let's say x one, x two, x three, x four. And they have value, let's say P1, P2. I mean value in the sense they have like different probability, P1, P2, P3, P4. And so these are probability, therefore this add up to one, right? This all probability added up to one here. So, and now I can put this P onto the um, interval between zero and one. So let's say, let, let me just draw like let's say P1 is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, P2 is 0 0.2, P3 is 0 0.3, and P4 is 0 0.4, let's say. Okay, did I use this example? I probably should use an example that I don't need to. Okay, uh, let me use the example from the slide. So uh, from the slide, I have an example. I have five. Um, so I don't need to compare it again. So I have like five symbol instead. So I have like five different outcomes instead. Like I have P1, P2, P4, P3, P4, and P5. And my P's here will be um, will be zero point point two five, zero point two five. 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.15. Again, they should add it up to one way. Right? So here, they all add it up to one. So now I can draw this piece here. I'm just say draw as a figure. I mean, on this partition. This is too far. Partition this um, interval between 0 and 1 by this piece here, so I will have like uh, uh, this length here approximately I guess uh, this is like P1, this is P2 so this therefore like this length is like 0 0.25 this is 0 0.25 let's say and then let's say this is like 0 0.2 this is P3 and then I have like this is P4, P5 so it's not very nicely drawn but you get my idea here. So now what, what we are going to do is like if we can introduce code word that correspond intervals like inside this region of these things here, then we can make sure that like this interval won't intersect, right? And because they do not intersect, so therefore like the corresponding code will be prefix free. Like each of them won't be prefix of each other. And because it's prefix free uh, the code is a uh, uniquely decodable. Then, then uh, yeah, we, we we can make sure that code is lossless. So that's the idea. So um, and precisely how they do it is like okay. After we construct this here, so we will take. Uh, let's see.
we can take the mid we will simply take the midpoint here and then like the midpoint in this case for example is like 0 0.125 here so uh and uh, 0 0.125 of course is like 0 0.001 something like now what we are going to design is like if we start from here 0 0.01 so we will correspond to uh, if let's say if I have a cover zero 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 point sorry uh, why this uh, uh, I don't know why it's okay yeah now if I cons I start from like a cover zero zero one and let's see if I the the um for this one here the um. The lower bound will be here, right? The upper bound, I don't know, will be like zero point, zero point zero. Sorry, the upper bound will be like zero point, yeah, zero point zero one 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 one, right? Or like zero point zero one. That's the lower bound. Uh, upper bound. So let's say if I consider this as my cohort, this is basically at. at, at this come from like zero point one two five here. So I take the midpoint here. I compute the binary, and then let's say I just tentatively think of okay, I take this as the code word. So let's see if it works. So if this is the code word, then then it con cos correspond to the region like from uh, zero point zero zero one, the lower bound is zero 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 one. And the upper bound is basically zero point zero zero one 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 way, and this this is actually is just equal to zero point zero one way. Yes, and uh, this is actually zero point one two five. This is zero point two five. So it is kind of work, but this this is uh, I would just say if it doesn't, then what we can do is say uh, we can. We can just insert more seal, right? Yeah. We can we can shrink it shorter, and uh, we can always make sure that like we we are going to have sufficient length, as long as we know that like if the length is equal to log one over p x plus one. Okay, this one I won't go into the arithmetic here. I think it's tedious, but it's very easy to verify that as long as I pick a length like this, I can I always make sure that like my interval, the corresponding code word, uh, I mean the interval of the corresponding code word will always lie inside the interval of the probability. Mm. So, uh, How to oh, okay. It's this is basically you just do some counting here. Um, so you know that like the the length here is way. Um, what was the length of the interval, by the way? If you have a cohort of length l, let's say, then from what we argued earlier. The length of the cohort is say two to the minus l, right? Right. So now this interval uh, length is p, and let's say we start at the midpoint. As long as like my, I want to make sure this is less than what? equal to this length of the interval but I start from the midpoint actually I want to s less than even uh, less than if uh, less than uh, even to like p over 2 right something like that and now I just want to let's see uh, I'm getting pretty cozy I'm thinking like this too um, so then uh, I have here is a Two to the minus L plus one. Okay, L minus one maybe. Uh, two minus wait, wait, wait a second. 
L plus 1, yes, is less than equal to P. And if I take a log 2, well actually, uh, let me flip the sign even. So if I flip the sign, I have 2 to the L minus 1 is less than 1 over P. So if I take a log here, log P is less bigger than equal to L minus 1. So I can put it on the other side, right? So then I have like this plus 1. So I want to have a, uh, oh, oh, okay. When I do one of these, I should flip the sign actually. When I do this, I have to flip the sign, right? So I have L is bigger than equal to log 1 over P plus 1. And of course, like 1 over P, I, I, it may not be an integer, then I can just say like, take the upper sign for that way. That is log P or log 1 over P? Log 1 over P, log yeah. one over P actually. So uh, my handwriting is like, let me start it over. So, so my, I want to have like 2 to minus L is the length of the interval, basically. Mm -hmm. It's the length of the interval. I want that to be less than equal to P over 2. P over 2, that's right. Yeah. And then I p uh and then this can go to the other side, so therefore I have two to the minus l plus one is less than equal to p, That's right. right? And then if I do one over instead on both sides, mm -hmm. then they will flip the sign, flip the inequality also, right? Yes. Yeah, right. So I have two to the l minus one here, right? That's right. So then if I take log two on both sides, right? log to 1 over p should be bigger than equal to l minus 1, right? Yes, yes, and then I my minus 1 can go the other side, I get plus 1 here. Right, so uh, then I should just pick l is bigger than equal to this guy here. So therefore I can pick this one, basically. Yes. Yes. So uh, if we do that, we ensure that it doesn't overlap. So therefore if I take this as example, like, uh, the cohort, corresponding cohort, would be something like I start from the midpoint here. I take, if I use this equation instead, uh, my p is a like zero point two five log one over uh, log over this is basically two here, so it's like equal to three, right? I mean, two plus one is equal to three. L. Yes, so so uh, actually it's okay. So the first cohort is say zero point zero one, zero mm -hmm. zero one. So then like for this guy here, I again take the midpoint here. Uh, this is like point three seven five. It turns out point three seven five is equal to zero point zero one one. And again like uh, p p two is same as p one right. So therefore like. The length of the cover again is free, so therefore like zero one one. Yes, zero one one is the cover for this guy here. And for P three here, so actually I, I I want to have more space, maybe I erase something well. So uh, let me think I can erase this at least. Uh, So, um, let's see if I'm fine here. So, for this, the third one here, uh, maybe I'll use another color. I say. For the first one here, again, I take the midpoint here. The midpoint here is point 0.6, right? Yeah. So, and um, point 0.6 is basically. Is actually equal to zero point one zero zero one one. We repeat this something, and if you compute the the required length again, the required length is uh, uh, one over not one over p plus one. In this case, the required length is four, so therefore the code word is a zero uh, is equal to one. Uh, one zero zero one. Uh -huh. And for this guy P four here, uh, I mean the the fourth symbol here. The midpoint here is actually zero point seven seven five. 
and 0 0.775 is equal to 0 0.11000011 0 0 0 1 1, something like that and then again I should take uh, 4 length should be 4 then the cohort should be 1100 1 0 0. and the last one this one uh, the midpoint is actually 0 0.925 Zero point nine two five is actually uh, zero point one 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 zero one one zero, and again I I the length should be four, so therefore the code word is a uh, the code word. Uh, I don't know. This is code word code word C X F E. This is CX4, CX5, this is equal to just 1110. One, one, yes? That's it? Yes? So basically, uh, we actually can put uh, not only in the middle of this one, but can we put also here, here, here? Uh, yes. No, actually, middle is good because I, that's, that's a problem. Is I, because you are doing the truncation, right? So if you, for example, like uh, in this case, for example, if I compute here, I may have uh, this value is here is a uh, 0 0.85. So 0 0.85 is equal to, uh, I, I just make it up, let's say, let's say uh, 0 0.11, See. Oh, I'm going to make it up. Let's make it up like that. So let's say this is 0 0.85, probably this should be incorrect. But then if I, I just take uh, again length 4 symbol, eh? I truncate, I, I would just take the first 4. Yeah. But you see what, where is the starting point here? The starting point will be like 0 0.11010000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, eh? mm. instead of this. Okay, wait a sec. Um, will be like zero point one 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 zero 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 something like that. Actually, this value will be less than zero point five eight five. Right? This is less than zero point eight five. This will be more than that. Le less than because okay, the other side will be less than uh, more than that, but the yeah. the lower bound will be less than that yeah. because we are doing the truncation here. Yeah. Afterward, we still have something here, right? And um, since we do the truncation, then the corresponding interval and the corresponding lower bound of that interval will be less than 0 0.85. That means that like, I, 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 I can be going outside that. Mm -hmm. So may probably like, you won't overlap with the even that. We won't overlap with the other guys. But mm -hmm. just to be safe, like you want to mm -hmm. take the midpoint so that like, that's, that's part of problem. Yeah. And, and of course, like, this is not a efficient call at all. It's just a, um, some call just have a bound that, okay, uh, the the length will be like this way. Because I know that there is, actually there's a call that is very easy to analyze. Because I, the, um, the length now, uh, we know that like the length is always just equal to this way. Given like p, the length is just log one over p plus one here. So then actually we can immediately uh, compute the the what's the expected length of the compass code. That would be simply uh, log one over p x plus 1 times px, right? This is the expected length of the core. And um, now, this, this of course will be less than equal to px log 1 over px plus 1 plus 1. I mean, this is less than equal to this guy plus one, right? Okay, makes sense, right? So therefore, like this is actually less than is equal to p x log one over p x plus two. Yes, 
and of course this is just xxy because it's 1 over px is minus not px yeah so that we immediately have a bound for the sf equal so basically we are always losing two bits here per symbol so it's, it's uh, not very efficient so compare if the entropy is not tight it's like, we're like two bits away uh, have a, I mean at least the bound is like two bits away but um, it, it's okay because hey, this is sufficient as long as we include kind of, kind of like I call this like a simple a kind of symbol uh, grouping check here So, of course, I, I just use SFE code directly. I won't achieve the entropy, right? But just think of that. Like, I, I have a source here, original source. Now, it have like, some symbol coming up, like x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. So, all the original code is that I treat each of these symbols like, independently, right? How about now, what we are going to do is, like, let's just take two at a, at a time as one one symbol so if we take one two at a time as it was symbol then if we go through exactly the same thing of course like, in this case it's much more complicated for example like if for the last case each of them have five outcomes right so if we take two at a time it means that like we, we will instead have like 25 outcomes and we will need to design a code SFV code with like 25 outcomes instead. But assuming that we do that, then for this, after the grouping, then uh, the new bound for the length of the code will be just like sum over P X1, X2, let's say, log P X1, X2, plus two, right? Something like that, right? This is the new length, right? Um, wait a sec. Uh, yes, yes. Each time we, we, we call like two symbols, the length required will be like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, but of course it was px1, px2, right? Because the source is discrete memoryless, right? So therefore, therefore like this is actually just part of them, right? Or like actually, I don't need to split this one. Uh, should I? That is independent. Yeah, they are independent. Uh, yeah. Okay, split it anyway. So, but here I also split it. Then if I split that, it will become like, like this way. Yeah. And I might have this plus two again. My minus this. Now, if I consider the first term here, I have sum over x1 and sum over x2, right? But if I sum over x2, basically, like, x2 only have this thing depend on x2, right? The rest does not depend on x2. And if I sum over x2, it's just equal to 1, right? So therefore, like, what I left, actually, maybe I write it more clearly. Originally, I should sum over x1 and x2. But when I sum over x2 for this guy here, this will be gone. So I only have sum over x1, px1, not px1. So similarly, for the second term, I will only have like sum over x2, px2, log px2. But of, of course, the sticks, I mean, statistically wise, this uh, kind of like each of them have the same distribution, right? So for both of these terms, it's just equal to hx, right? So like, I mean, the first symbol, for each of the symbol, they are all statistically identically distributed. So they have the same identical, the same, same distribution. That, okay, that's the original assumption that we draw from this source here, not just like, uh, maybe I didn't emphasize this, but it is kind of assumed, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, it would become weird. Like, each time you draw the sample, they are independent, but at the same time, like, each time the sample have the same distrib distribution. Uh, and the distribution is given by this P here, right? 
that is not the two, 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 two entropy because we have one, this one. Yes, there's two of them. Oh, yeah. Two, yeah, I want to say, two. yeah, two times, yes. Yeah. There's two times that plus two, right? So therefore, it's equal to two, right? Yeah, that's right. But this is coding two symbols at a time. Yeah. So if we think of that, okay, per symbol wise, the weight required will be over by two, right? So therefore, it checks plus one, right? So now you see that like we drop from two to plus one now, mm -hmm. and we can repeat that like theoretically we can just say okay instead kind of like doing two at a time we can do like n at a time right, mm -hmm. so then like we'll drop like from h x plus two to h x plus two over n. This will be reached to the only entropy. Yes, so and and we can pick any n. Yes. Yeah, if you pick an n. Yeah, we can pick n to be infinite. Yeah. Of course, uh, the capacity will be like very high, but we can pick n to be infinite. Yeah. Then we can up achieve the entropy. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, of course, this is not the um, the exact way they do that. Like uh, they they have so-called arithmetical. It's just I like, modify this idea a little bit. Uh, just do this bookkeeping more. Um, um, uh, more intelligently so that like basically you can achieve this uh, kind of entropy like hx so uh, I guess I, I would just stop now I don't know like let's see I guess I uh, you guys should be still here. So yes. What is the most efficient uh, form? That is not, of course, another uh, form. Uh, uh, but yeah. I mean, that another uh, more efficient yeah. for now. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, this is kind of a topic that is more or less considered soft. The. Um, So it um it depends. Say like, uh actually, in in terms of practical purposes, say like, um you have this so so called like um arithmetic coding. This is basically like is um kind of uh, as I mentioned like it. It just uh, continue to develop the same idea uh, as a V code, so um, yeah. But I, I'm, I I probably won't talk about that. Like, if you guys are interested, I can prepare that. Let like, talk about that next time, maybe. But uh, it's uh, it's kind of like the standard now, I guess. Uh, at one at one point, uh, this is kind of like a a pattern stuff, like. Uh, IBM hold a pattern, so therefore like, it was not used for some time, but like the pattern has been expired for a long time now. Uh, of course, we have Hoffman coding, and uh, Hoffman coding is easy, right? Um, if you kind of like you assume that like um, your kind of like um, the statistics is not going to change, actually. That's another like advantage of arithmetic coding. You can do something like so called contest based. So what it means that is um you can have some kind of information like from somewhere else. For example, uh the current uh symbol you're going to encode kind of depends on a like, I mean have the statistics kind of depends on what's going on in the past. Then you can use this as an indexing. Um, every time you look at like what is what you are having here, you just kind of like switch your code like kind of pretty intelligently. So then, therefore, you can compress much better because like for given like okay, what I mean is like uh, let's say this coil y like for for previous observation, your h x given or or y, y like your and this is like what your encoding is x. So your p x Given y, this distribution, or, or or maybe I I emphasize that 
y equal to y1 is not the same of px given y equal to y2, let's say. So then in the sense that each time you want to switch the come in, into a different context, and, and what's nice about the arithmetic coding is that you can start with the context is the same, and then when you continue to code, or when you continue to encode, you can train your uh, coder such that they like, learn different contests. Uh, and um, of course, there's a trade-off here. Is like if you have too many contests, like uh, for example, you can introduce a Y1, Y2, Y3, and so on, many different contests. And then if you have too, too many of them, you won't have enough symbols to train your distribution right, for each of the contests. But if you you only have very few contests, maybe you have only one contest, then maybe uh, your statistics is not very accurate. So, uh, and uh, I I think that many of you say heard of Huffman coding. Also, like this is a something like very simple that uh, you just build a tree from the distribution, and then you yeah, if you remember like something like if I have like. Uh, take the example again. If you have p1 is 0 0.25, p2 is 0 0.25, and p3 is 0 uh, I think it's like 0 0.2, and 0 0.15, and 0 0.15. Then I think it's that uh, you just build a tree by just um, putting like the two smallest current probabilities together. So like these two put together, you get 0.3 now. So once you group them together, you 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 consider this this gone. Now you look at this, this uh, four again, and then you pick the two is smallest, and then you group them together, and then you have like this is point four five, then you have this three, then you group them, group the smallest three together, I mean group the smallest two together again, then you have like point five. Point five five, then finally you group these two, oops, this is pretty ugly. So then you get uh, this is one, right? And then you just read it back, basically. Like, uh, you have one of the path is zero, one of the path is one. And then uh, you can read back the code, where it will be like, uh, for uh, this one, for example, like, will be like one, zero, right? And for this guy, it will be like zero, zero. And this guy is like zero, one, uh-huh. And this is a zero. Uh, sorry, one one. Oh, this is zero here. One one zero, and this is one one one. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of optimum if you just code one symbol at a time. So, and uh, the disadvantage is that unlike arithmetic coding, it actually allows you to code like several symbols at a time, like PT. Um, um, kind of, uh, it's hard to, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty intelligently. And, um, oh, okay, and also, like, one thing, like, a side note that is an interesting story for, like, Hoffman coding is, it's actually a homework problem, uh, by MIT students. Like, Hoffman was a MIT student, I, like, and I think it's, like, uh, if I remember correctly, Fano gave the class for homework. He say like, can you design the code uh, that uh, is kind of optimum in the sense I just coding one symbol at a time, and then like uh, Hoffman did that, and uh, it's actually a homework problem, <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah. So so anyway, like I guess um, I don't know whether you guys are still. Here, uh, let's see. Maybe here. No, that's Telegram. Yes. So um. So I guess I will take a break for the moment.